This is Dr. Narendra Kumar from Chennai will be demonstrating the fluorescent dye usage in endoscopic pituitary surgery. My sincere thanks to my neurosurgeon Dr. Paranidharan sir for his guidance and support. 28 year old female present to us with a headache and left vision loss. Her scans showed that a large expansive cell has supracellular lesion, most probably a pituitary macroadenum of the suggestion of right cavernous sinus invasion and then cystic degeneration. Maybe a necrosis of the hemorrhage content. And we planned an endoscopic removal of the same. So, general anesthesia, our first step is to do a partial resection of the middle turbinate, harvesting the hard heart flap. We are using a Colorado needle for this case to harvest. Three incision was made to harvest the hard heart flap. And we are gently removing the flap and placing it in the neurosopharynx. The next step is making a posterior septectomy. Every structure in skull base surgery is a goal. So preserve this bone. This may be useful for the reconstruction in later. To make a clean cut, carly and cranially. Just cut the bone with the scissors not to remove forcefully from the lax forceps because this bone will be very thin and it can be used. Uh, using a keratin forcep, we are making a shoulder osteotomy and using the drill system, neural drill, we are making a removing the boma, drilling it, planar osteotomy. And the bone is very hard. It took time, so we use a chiseling to remove in a, the warmer bone in a single piece. And this was a picture the cella, which is protruding, can be visualized nicely. And our next step is to widen the exposure so that our handling the instruments will be good and the removal of the tumor can be easy now we are stepping out the mucosa overlying the spinoid sinus while doing this we'll have a little bleed and which can be easily controlled take time for the exposure once it is done and very thin bone was there overlying the cella which will can be removed with the rosen's knife of the ear instrument or with the keratin forceps be gentle make sure the bone is bony thin papery thin so that the removal will make you it's, it's very easy widen as much as exposure that's very important for the success of the case using 11 blade we are making an incision u shape you can see the tumor is popping out make the both the side the vertical incision the dura is incised and using the blackersley forceps you can he uh, uh, superiorly you can place a dura see the tumor coming out we are taking a little for the biopsy and uh, we started the removal of the tumor you can see a glimpse of uh, the cream color which is nothing but uh, the fluorescent dye used 20 minutes before starting up the endoscopic pituitary surgery given a fluorescent dye via the lumbar puncture we are removing the tumor here the fluorescent dye is very useful in endoscopic skull base surgery. The intraoperative detection of CSF leaks during endonoisal endoscopic skull base surgery is critical to preventing the post-operative CSF leaks. So in, in that manner, the intrathecal fluorescent has been used in various doses to aid in detection of intraoperative CSF leak. Thereby, the detection confirming the watertight repair can be made 
and this complication of inadequate function can also do in uh, flu meningitis or tension hemocephalus can be prevented. The primary indication of utilizing the closure techniques is successful identification of intraoperative CSF leak. Hence, any method that increases the surgeon's ability to detect intraoperative CSF leaks would be potentially advantageous. So, we tried using uh, this technique here so that the diaphragm cella is coming down here showing a very beautiful picture here which shows that there is no CSF leak at present and if so it can be easily identified so that lateral compartment of the tumor is also gently removed here as the diaphragm comes down and removing the tumor is little difficult you can rise it with the instrument as I do but for the complete removal of the tumor or maximum removal of the tumor if you drain little CSF leak via the lumbar drain the diaphragm cella goes upstairs and which makes the cella cavity free or easily available for any instruments to remove it, the tumor in total so these are some of the advantages of using uh, lumbar drain so hemostatic agents has been applied over here with the maximal removal of the tumor we can plan for the reconstruction placing a fat inside the cella make sure that you are not doing a over packing of the same and this is sufficient replace with the hemostatic fibrins and um, replacing the dura the posterior septum bone has been used here for the reconstruction which will give you a bony surface also to place the heart art very nicely to the take up the heart flap is repotioned completely and close with the tissue glue and this finishes the case very immediate post op scans has been taken which shows a maximum removal of the tumor and the patient was vision improved the patient was happy there was no seize of leak intraoperatively and postoperatively as well There was no any complication post-operatively. There was a maximum removal of the tumor. This was an immediate post-op scan. Thank you one and all for watching this video. Thank you all. I might I sincerely thank my neurosurgeon for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir.